interesting. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to control the brightness of an LED using a two Coulomb potentiometer. I've soldered the positive leg of the LED to the positive terminal of the battery. Next, the negative leg of the LED is connected to the middle pin of the potentiometer. Finally, I've soldered one of the side pins of the potentiometer to the negative terminal of the battery to complete the circuit. Now watch what happens when I rotate the potentiometer. As I turn it, the LED gradually gets brighter and dimmer. That's because the potentiometer is acting like a variable resistor, controlling the amount of electricity flowing through the LED. This is how dimmer switches work in real life. You can use this trick in many electronic projects. Let me know if you'd like to see more experiments like this. Today, I finally received the V-Type supercapacitor I ordered. Let's unbox it and take a closer look. At first glance, it may seem small, but don't be fooled. It packs a punch. To get it ready, I'll charge it using a 6-volt battery for just a few seconds. This is a 1F 5.5-volt supercapacitor, compact in size but powerful in performance. And now it's fully charged. Time for the real test. I'll connect it to a 6-volt DC motor and see how it performs. Look at that. It's running smoothly. Supercapacitors are truly fascinating. If you found this interesting, don't forget to like, share, and drop your thoughts in the comments. This is a 12-volt gear motor that I extracted from a 12-volt air cooler. This type of motor is specifically designed for high torque and efficient performance, making it perfect for applications where controlled and powerful movement is required. Now let's carefully remove its cover and explore its internal components to see how it operates. As we open it up, wow, amazing. You can see an intricate system of multiple gears inside, rotating smoothly. These gears help in reducing speed while increasing torque, allowing the motor to drive components like oscillating louvers in an air cooler. If you enjoyed this teardown, make sure to like, share, and comment your thoughts. What other motors or gadgets should I explore next? Let me know in the comments. Hey everyone, today I built a simple electric project using a 3.7 volt battery, a reed switch, a DC gear motor, and a light bulb. The bulb is wired in series with the reed switch and the motor is powered by the same battery through a mini switch. I attached a small wooden arm to the motor shaft with a tiny magnet at one end. When the motor spins, the magnet moves closer to the reed switch, turning the bulb on. As it moves away, the bulb turns off, creating a cool automatic flashing effect. Let me know what you think in the comments. Today, in this exciting video, I'm testing the power of this high-speed drone motor to see if it has enough thrust to lift this dinosaur toy into the air. This motor spins at incredible speeds, generating strong airflow, just like the ones used in actual drones. Will this tiny but powerful motor be able to lift it? Watch till the end to see the results, and don't forget to like, share, and comment with your thoughts. Here's an amazing LED solar outdoor light with a motion sensor. It features three lighting modes, making it perfect for your garage, garden, street, shed, or yard. This light is waterproof and built for all weather conditions, ensuring reliable performance outdoors. The motion sensor detects movement and automatically turns on, providing added security and convenience. Plus, with its solar-powered design, there's no need for wiring. Just set it up and let the sun do the work. I'll be testing this light in a detailed video soon, so stay tuned for that. But if you're interested in getting one right now, click the products button here to check it out. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe for more cool gadget showcases. Today, I've built a powerful mini DC fan using a high-speed DC motor typically found in drones and a supercapacitor as the power source. Drone motors are known for their impressive speed and efficiency, making this fan surprisingly strong for its size. The supercapacitor I've used can store and release energy much faster than a regular battery, which gives the fan a quick and powerful start. Now let's test it out.
This is an LED. Now let's connect it to a 3.7 volt battery through a 100 ohm resistor. As we complete the circuit, the LED lights up, indicating that the current is flowing in the correct direction. Now let's reverse the polarity by swapping the battery connections. Since LEDs are diodes, they block current when reverse biased, so the LED does not light up. To solve this issue and allow the LED to work regardless of polarity, we'll use a bridge rectifier. Now we reconnect the battery and the LED lights up. If we swap the battery terminals again, the LED still works, demonstrating how the bridge rectifier automatically corrects the polarity. A farad is the unit of capacitance in electronics, named after Michael Faraday. Capacitance is the ability of a component to store electrical charge. A capacitor with a capacitance of one farad can store one coulomb of charge when one volt is applied across its terminals. One farad equals one million microfarads. This capacitor rated 500 farad, which is equal to 500 million microfarad, which is a very big value. For complete details, visit Science Quiz Book Directifier, not for AC to DC conversion, but to change polarity. Let's test it. I connected a DC power source with the rectifier and swapped the input polarity. Normally, reversing the polarity could damage sensitive components, but with this circuit, the output polarity remains the same no matter how I connect the input. This technique is super useful for protecting circuits from reverse polarity connections. What should I test next? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cool experiments. Hey friends, today I've built a cool little gadget, a super capacitor powered mini hand fan. I call it the Turbo Breeze Fan. This tiny fan runs without a traditional battery. I've used a simple setup, a DC motor, a super capacitor, and a switch. Now let's charge the super capacitor with a 3.7 volt battery for a few seconds. Okay, here we go. I'm flipping the switch, and look at that, it's spinning effortlessly. But here's the twist. How can a fan run with just a few seconds of charging? What's the secret behind the supercapacitor's power? Can you guess the science behind it? Let me know in the comments. This is a 12 volt LED. Let's try to light it up using a 3.7 volt battery. But wait, it's not working. As expected, the voltage is too low. Now let's try something different. I've connected two DC motors using pulleys and a rubber band. So when one spins, it drives the other. Let's see what happens next. I'm going to connect the same 12 volt LED to the terminals of one DC motor. I'm going to connect the same 12 volt LED to the terminals of one DC motor. And, and now I'll connect the 3.7 volt battery to the other DC motor. Still now I'll connect the 3.7 volt battery to the other DC motor. Still nothing, nothing. But what if we switch the polarity? Look at that, the LED. But what if we switch the polarity? Look at that, the LED is glowing, is glowing. Now, just a moment ago, the same battery couldn't light it up. Now with this setup, it works perfectly. What just happened? Can you figure it out? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. This is a DC gear motor. When I connect it to a battery, it rotates in the clockwise direction. If I swap the pause direction and rotates counterclockwise, this happens because a DC motor's rotation depends on the polarity of the power supply. However, in some applications, we may need the motor to always rotate in the same direction, regardless of how the power connections are made. To achieve this, we can use a bridge rectifier. motor remain consistent even if we change the input connections. Now I've connected bridge rectifier to this motor. As you can see, even when I swap battery terminals, the motor continues to rotate in the same clockwise direction. This setup is useful in circuits where main fixed rotation is crucial. This is a mini DD motor. This is a mini DD motor. I'm going with it to see how electricity can generate manually spin its shaft. Shaft to 
get a bad grip for negative parts of my multi to the results. As, as you can see, the motors generate electricity, but the volt connected the wires in reverse. Let's correct that. that. Now with correct polarity, so comment below with the thoughts on this experiment. Let's see power supercapacitor can in 500 F. But what does that really mean? give you an idea of 500 F supercapacitor can store a surprisingly large amount of energy compared to smaller capacitors. Farads measure how much electric capacitor can hold. And 500 farads is massive for, for such a small component. Now, let's get to the test. I'm going to connect LE to the, the supercapacitor. Will it light up? And if it does, how long do you think it's on with just 0.7s. And if you know why 500 farad is such a big deal, drop your answers in the comments below. Something unbelievable has happened.